Virginia State Police report a disabled minor's 19-year-old son was grazed by a bullet at a Mingo County mine today. The Wildcat strikes are in support of 1,900 miners on strike against the Pittston Coal Group. News Under 5's John Mongol reports UMW members from other areas are helping Southwest Virginia miners slow traffic to Pittston processing plants. Earlier this week, coal truck traffic to preparation plants came to a virtual standstill. Pickets, riding cars, and pickup trucks are still running afoul of Virginia State Police, though. Numerous traffic tickets are being written for impeding traffic. They're stopping and uh, stopping our people and letting them come across the road. It was up quite a bit yesterday over the day before. And it's, well, they don't have too many today, but uh, today's not over yet, though. Pickets were ordered to stop massive gatherings at mine entrances and to stop blocking roads by court orders in state and federal courts. Pickets here at the Moss Number 3 coal preparation plant have moved off the side of the road into vehicles on the road to try to slow coal truck traffic into the plant. This activity is clearly in violation of court order. Uh, it's in violation of the National Labor Relations Act. That issue may be raised tomorrow in federal court when strike leaders Cecil Roberts and John Cox answer contempt citations before Judge Glenn Williams. Judges across the country are ordering union members back to work, but so far the pickets say there is no change in strategy. There are a few of them leaving out, I think, going home for the weekend. Some of them leaving today, some of them leaving tomorrow, but I think they'll be back next week, though. It has uh, impeded the delivery of our coal. In Russell County, Virginia, John Mongol, News Center 5. Since the courts have banned massive demonstrations at Pittston sites, the union members are cruising the roadways near the Pittston operations, impeding the flow of traffic and slowing coal trucks. The Virginia State Police reports around 300 vehicles and pedestrians at Pittston's Moss No. 3 site in Russell County and another 300 at the Pittston uh, McClure mine in Dickinson County. No arrests have been made. Court charges. Good evening, everyone. I'm Betty Payne. And I'm John Cleary. Thanks for being with us. Two top officials, including the second-in-command of the United Mine Workers Union, remain free this evening after a judge refused to render a decision on whether the two men were orchestrating civil disobedience on the picket lines. The two officials said they were surprised the judge did not send them to jail. Supporters of the United Mine Workers Union gathered today in Big Stone Gap, Virginia, at U.S. District Court to congratulate Cecil Roberts, Vice President of the International Union, and John Cox, a union representative, who both escaped punishment for allegedly breaking a court injunction that prohibits civil disobedience. For the past week, hundreds of cars have been slowing transportation of Pittston Coal. Judge Glenn Williams repeatedly asked Roberts if he was orchestrating the convoys, and Roberts repeatedly gave the same answer. I commented to the judge in good conscience I couldn't do that. That's a decision that each person in this country, in my opinion, has a, a right to decide. Roberts was also asked if he would request the strikers, many of whom are wildcat strikers from out of state, to cease the civil disobedience. And we work extremely hard to keep this peaceful and nonviolent, and we're going to continue to do so. And I hope the judge uh, continues to give us that opportunity to keep it peaceful and nonviolent. Judge Williams said he would rule on the status of the mass convoys at the Moss No. 3 preparation plant sometime next week. Richard Trunka told supporters the strike was a war against Virginia. Today, Judge Williams said if that statement also included his court, Trumka was declaring war on the wrong place. And in West Virginia, the governor has offered to mediate the Pittston dispute. Governor Gaston Caperton is offering to meet around the clock with Pittston CEO Paul Douglas and UMW President Richard Trumka. However, Caperton has set down guidelines for those talks. Both sides must agree to make a good faith effort to stop wildcat strikes that have spread throughout the country. Other coal companies suing the union over the wildcat strikes must suspend their litigation, and other coal companies must promise not to ship coal to Pittston while negotiations are in progress. Caperton is asking both sides to meet with him on Monday to end the two-and-a-half-month-old... Gerald Belisle sent a letter to county administrators in four southwest Virginia coal counties asking them to meet with him to discuss the strike situation. U.S. Center 5's Jim Conrad has a report. The governor sent letters to Russell, Taswell, Dickinson, and Wise County leaders asking for a meeting July 19th. In the letter, the governor discussed the economic impact of the strike on the counties and the states. West Virginia Governor Gaston Caperton called for UMW President Richard Trumka 
and Pittston Company President Paul Douglas to meet with him on Monday. Governor Belisles responded to that request with reporters in Richmond today. The only parties who can resolve the dispute are the parties themselves, Pittston and the United Mine Workers. Um, when they decide that they have reached uh, a solution that is satisfactory to both sides, um, then this, res this dispute may be resolved. But they are the only ones who can really resolve it. Uh, I hope that the meeting in West Virginia is productive because, as I understand it, the situation there is somewhat different. But again, uh, I am doing what I think is in the best interest of Virginia, and I hope that the parties can resolve their disputes very quickly. United Mine Workers Union President Richard Trumka has accepted the invitation from West Virginia's governor to negotiate a coal strike settlement at the governor's mansion. There's no response yet from Pittston Coal Group, which has been struck by the UMW since April. Jim Conrad, News Center. Up with nothing. They won't get this decent contract. Absolutely not. I don't think there is uh, any chance of that because they're so solidified, they're so unified, and the people, the communities are supporting the Pittston miners. The UMW strike against Pittston involves 1,900 miners in West Virginia, Virginia, and Kentucky. With all negotiations off, it's likely we'll see more of the same thing witnessed in Stone, Kentucky this morning. More than 100 pickets surrounded a building where hired security guards were staying. The cops moved in to let the hired guards leave safely. In the midst of the turmoil, a jeep driven by a Pittston official was overturned. About 40 state troopers moved in to quell the turbulence. It was resolved with no additional incidents, no arrests, and the union claiming victory this day. We have history. We have made a record. We have got the gun thud. That's the company hard out of here. Do you see that? Police report all is quiet in stone. From West Virginia's governor to resume talks in a 12-week-old coal strike now affecting 10 states. There's no response yet from the Pittston Coal Group to Governor Gaston Caperton's offer. Meanwhile, UMW strike leaders were in court once again facing contempt of court charges stemming from the use of so-called tourist convoys as a way of slowing Pittston coal operations. They made a decision upon their own that uh, they are wanted to make a statement about the fines that have been levied against the union and the jailing of their brothers that took place previously and also in support of their brothers at Pittston. Once again, that's a freedom that these people exercise, and I'm not going to interfere with their freedom. We have uh, fulfilled our constitutional duties in that respect. The latest tactic is having an effect on the transportation of coal out of the mines. A United Mine Workers blockade of the Eastern Coal Company offices in Stone, Kentucky, turned violent today when a jeep with a Pittston official inside was rolled. But it ended peacefully when the company met the union's demand. The Eastern, Control Eastern Coal Facility. However, in Charleston, West Virginia, Governor Gaston Caperton offered his home and his office to Union President Rich Trumka and Pittston Chairman Paul Douglas. Douglas refused to deal at the governor's mansion, saying a federal mediator would provide a better setting. Trumka said that would be fine with him, but word isn't set on any meeting. Caperton, meanwhile, is projecting that the state and Wildcat walkouts will cost the state millions of dollars unless the two sides can come to a quick agreement. And Ohio is winding down. Today, nearly 1,000 miners went back to work. The Ohio Valley Coal Company begins operation at midnight last night. That put 860 men back in the mines out of the 2,600 in Ohio who joined the sympathy walkout for Pittston coal miners. That Belmont County operation joined the much smaller Saginaw mine near St. Clairsville in going back to work. 100 men went back at that mining company. However, hundreds of Ohioans have vowed to continue the walkout in the Buckeye State. No coal Association meetings at the Greenbrier in southern West Virginia. Chairman W. Carter Grinstead predicted that with this year's output, it'll top 900 million tons. And the top executive with Exxon Coal said he wouldn't be surprised if next year that figure jumped to more than 1 billion tons of coal produced in the United States. Grinstead said he made these predictions after two good years in a row, the last two. Grinstead spoke to the national group in White Sulphur Springs. He is to explain a temporary restraining order issued against the miners in federal court yesterday. The court has ordered the UMW locals to stop their work action and get back to work or face fines of $100 a day. 
Nearly a thousand miners have honored the picket line. The meeting is scheduled for one o'clock tomorrow at the John L. Lewis building in Oakwood, Virginia. But Pittston backed out of the deal, saying it would rather have a federal mediator for negotiations. Caperton said he would not give up in his push to end the strike before it crippled the state's economy. The wildcat walkouts are now threatening to take the coal export market away from the United States. Exporters speaking at the coal conference at the Greenbrier in southern West Virginia say national foreign users of American coal are getting antsy after watching the two weeks of striking, where production was cut by one-third. Europeans fear that their ability to put out electricity will be in danger if the turmoil continues. The national strike has idled more than 44,000 miners in 10 states at one time during the troubles. The chairman of... ...continue his efforts to end the two-and-a-half-month-old strike. Caperton offered to mediate talks between the United Mine Workers President Richard Trumka and Pittston Coal Chairman Paul Douglas. Douglas declined, saying federal mediators would be better. The company have been called to a meeting tomorrow. Union spokesman Donnie Farmer with Local 2232 says the meeting is to explain a temporary restraining order issued against the miners. Federal court has ordered UMW locals to get back to work or face fines of $100 a day. The meeting's scheduled for 1 o'clock tomorrow at the John L. Lewis building in Oakwood, Virginia. In my opinion, has a right to decide. Tuesday, Judge Glenn Williams released strike leader Marty Hudson, Jackie Stump, and C.A. Phillips from their two-week stay in jail. All they had to do was say they would obey the order and, could have, and uh, not be having other people to disobey the order, and, and they wouldn't have gone to jail in the first place. Meanwhile, union members have changed their tactics from picket lines to rolling pickets, which block Pittston Coal Group trucks. Members from 10 states are lending support. Pittston officials say the rolling pickets violate the National Labor Relations Act, and company president Mike Odom says someone is circulating a phony contract. I want to know, who is it, whose contract is this? It's not Pittston's. I want to know who's distributing it. I'd like somebody in the union to stand up and be a man or woman and say who this contract belongs to. In other news, early next month, Eastern Metro Express will resume flights to the Tri-Cities. It stopped March after the Eastern strike and bankruptcy. And more he fines against the United Mine Workers and its leadership. And he may be sending rank-and-file members to jail. The latest barrage of legal penalties stems from rolling caravans of pickets, slowing trucks going in and out of Pittston Coal property. News Center 5's John Mongol has the story. They're calling themselves tourists. They're union members from several states who have joined striking miners at Pittston Coal sites in southwest Virginia. They do not think they're doing anything wrong. Ed, I think we have a right to ride the roads. We pay our tax. We buy our tags. It's public highway. I think we should be able to ride the road if we want to ride the road. But the Virginia State Police and U.S. District Court Judge Glenn Williams do not agree. Here's what they gave you. They got us. They got you for what? Slowing down, slowing down the traffic. Now we just out here sightseeing. That's bull. Judge Williams has ordered fines of $200,000 against the United Mine Workers and $20,000 fines against UMW Vice President Cecil Roberts and International Representative John Cox. Each day the rolling caravans continue, the union will have to pay another $100,000 and Roberts and Cox $10,000 each. State and federal court orders took the striking miners off the picket lines and put them on the roads in front of Pittston operations here. Hundreds went to jail for sitting in front of coal trucks and more may go now for driving slowly in front of mines and preparation plants. Five pickets were arrested for criminal contempt over the weekend and face up to six months in jail when they go to federal court on Wednesday. And Judge Williams says everyone cited for impeding traffic will eventually have to answer to him. I don't know what the next step will be. We'll, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. John Mongol, News Center uh, Caperton Farm. offered to mediate the talks under four conditions. The union accepted, but Pittston rejected the offer. Today, Caperton offered to meet with leaders once again without the conditions previously placed on the get-together. The union has ordered some 43,000 United Mine Workers members back to work. The union went off the job in 10 states in support of a strike against Pittston Coal in southwest Virginia. 
News Center 5's John Mongol has more from Dickinson County, where many of the Wildcat strikers have joined rolling convoys. Heavy fines in federal court in Abingdon earlier this week reduced the number of rolling pickets here. But union members from out of state are still on the roads in Russell and Dickinson counties. Well, we've been pulling them off the road, issuing them citations when violations are evident. We've also been trying to keep the trucks moving as best we can down there. Want me to leave? Move it. Move it. Okay, all right. Come on. All right, we're leaving. The impasse and negotiations between Pittston and the union, along with a succession of court losses, has caused some pickets to vent their frustration against the news media. A labor law, uh, particularly since the Taft-Hartley is set up so that labor unions um, almost lose. The West Virginia labor. judge wants miners to give up their walkouts and return to the job, but the union leadership believes that they'll have to stand up to pits them. The same companies that are trying to enjoin us to go back to work ultimately are going to look at us in 1992 and if, if Pittston would prevail and say, well, you let Pittston out, you want us to pay for their uh, obligations and we're going to be into it with them. United Mine Workers officials have been given 10 days to come up with a plan to end the sympathy strikes, but miners have ignored previous restraining orders and stayed off the job. In Dickinson County, Virginia, John Mongol, News Center 5. The Wildcat strike was not authorized by the union, and he's urging those strikers to go back to work. Daily fines. Also today, state police reported numerous acts of violence and vandalism against coal truck drivers and Pittston employees. Authorities say a bullet tore into the radiator of one coal truck, rocks broke the windshield of four others, and fire destroyed the garage of the owner of several coal trucks. And, uh, and only seek the um, performance on the part of the union of their contract with them, with whom they have no dispute whatsoever. The order requires union officials to report to the NLRB within 10 days on what steps they've taken to meet that court order. Miners have ignored NAP's other orders telling them to go back to their jobs. Failed contract talks between the union and Pittston Coal Group. Virginia State Police say hundreds of cars and trucks are slowly parading along roads linking Pittston's main processing plant with supply mines. In Pike County, Kentucky, Eastern Coal Corporation is trying to limit union pickets at its mines and coal processing plant in McAndrews. Eastern is charging the union with harassing and threatening employees, trespassing, and vandalizing company property. A hearing is set for 2 o'clock this afternoon in Pike yeah. Company with trying to incite minors with reports of security guards videotaping members and their houses. And Westmoreland Coal Company is having trouble filling its coal orders. Westmoreland told a Dutch utility that it will not be able to fill a 30,000 ton order. The company will probably not be able to fill four other orders. About 650 miners in Virginia and 100 in West Virginia have been off the job in sympathy, in sympathy with striking Pittston union member. Coal trucks near the Pittston operations. Miners and their supporters have organized a series of slow-moving convoys which are clogging the roads near the mines. The national spotlight will be focused on the Pittston strike on the 4th of July when Cesar Chavez tours the coal fields. Chavez led a boycott against California grape growers a few years ago and gained national attention when he underwent hu a hunger strike to draw attention to that boycott. For the last 20 years, Chavez has been one of the leaders of America's Mexican-American community and a strong leader in the United Farm Workers Union. And yesterday morning... Union is holding at least 10 states and several companies hostage. But union members say this is a fight they're determined not to lose. News Center 5's John Mongol has more. Many United Mine Workers members from across the country are spending their annual vacations in southwest Virginia. Others have simply walked off the job to be here. Pittston employees admit the union tactics to slow down or stop coal trucks can be very effective. If we lose down here, there's a chance they're going to try it where we're at. You might as well beat it before it gets started. Company officials say the last two days have been particularly violent, and their trucks and their employees have been the targets. We have had this morning four vehicles get windshields broken out from rocks and we've also had one truck that was shot missed the radiator and hit the hood state troopers are continuing to work the roads in an effort to keep the traffic and the coal moving
The Virginia State Police say they're now issuing over 100 tickets a day to striking miners impeding traffic on coal hauling roads here in southwest Virginia. But that's not bothering members of the convoys who say the union is promptly paying their tickets. And they don't seem to be worried about the numerous fines and court injunctions aimed against their efforts. I don't believe so. You look around down here and see the license plates. I don't think there's too many guys left back at home to go to work. In fact, many of the rank and file say they'll follow their leadership to jail if need be. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Some of us have been in jail before. We'll be there again someday, probably. The strike is aimed at Pittston, but other coal companies are beginning to feel the effects of a nationwide wildcat strike. Westmoreland coal officials say their union employees' work stoppage has left them with contracts they cannot fill. It's very discouraging to see the union ignoring its contracts that it negotiated in good faith with the BCLA and its many companies. In Russell County, Virginia, John Mongol, News Center. The coal miners and their families showed up for a rally at Pittston's headquarters. The miners were bused from Virginia and Pennsylvania and carried wooden crosses with the names of miners killed in accidents or from black lung disease. Putting us up to do anything, uh, what's being done, it's been done on their own, on our own. And, you know, the judge has got his opinion. It looks like he's using it pretty, pretty much here lately against us, too. State police are writing a lot of tickets out here, but they're not for speeding, they're for impeding. One out-of-state miner claimed he was just sightseeing. And one of your welcoming committee up the road up here, he stopped me and he said, uh, I was impeding traffic, you know. I didn't understand what he meant. He had to explain it to me because I'm a tourist. The orchestrated disobedience appears to be continuing. And Judge Williams says he's ready to continue handing out hefty fines. Mark Roberts for CBS News. Some of the truckers did not want their faces or their rigs on camera. But two were willing to stop, talk with us, show us the bullet holes in their windshield, their fender, their radiator, their air cleaner. A hail of bullets, they say, came from the woods atop of Lens Mountain early this morning. Mad, mad at the Union, because they don't bring their own. Two-thirds of the Union is still working, and it's just a bunch of outlaws in the Union, the way I feel about it. Do you feel that you can do your job safely anymore? No, sir. Not safely because of the, the state police. The governor won't let the state police do their job. One younger trucker says he may just give up and go on welfare. It's about ready to just quit, I reckon. Get out here in a truck trying to make an honest living and somebody wants to shoot you. The drivers work for C&H Trucking of Beckley. They take coal from the Elk Run Mines in Boone County to Kanawha Valley destinations. Their route along Lens Creek is replete with signs indicating people's sentiments. But signs don't kill people. This bullet hole in the cab of this truck fired at Lens Creek Mountain brings a new chapter to this saga. It's no longer a matter of civil disobedience or vandalism. These are rifle slugs. Bob Brenner, WSAZ News Center 3, Kanawha County. State police are still investigating those incidents. They say arrests are expected. ...to strike and to halt threats against the coal companies. An estimated 350 people rallied in Greenwich, Connecticut at Pittston's headquarters today in support of striking mine workers in Virginia and West Virginia. Family members and friends of the striking United Mine Workers participated in a mock memorial and placed small wooded crosses in a church representing loved ones who have died from black lung disease and mine accidents. The original strike began when more than 1,900 miners walked off the job. April 5th against the Pittston Coal Group out of Virginia. Method of collecting revenue. Off the property of Eastern Coal Corporation, a subsidiary of Pittston. Judge F. Bird Hogg said the UMW must limit its picketing to five sites near the Pittston subsidiary. In other striking news, three more governors have joined the call for the union and Pittston to return to the bargaining table. Governors Richard Thompson of Illinois, Robert Casey of Pennsylvania, and John Ashcroft of Missouri are asking both sides to renew the negotiations. Today in southwest Virginia, officials for Pittston Coal Group say this has been one of the roughest weeks since the early days of the strike. News Center 5's John Mongol has more on the story. 
Convoys of striking United Mine workers and convoys of Pittston coal trucks continue to share the roads with complaints of tire flattening jack rocks on both sides. There was a white coal truck uh, throwed out approximately eight to ten road jacks. And both sides are pointing their fingers at the other side. I think it's more or less isolated. Uh, on both sides? Or? No, sir. No, it's all on their side. Things appear relatively quiet on the picket line here at Moss Number 3 as everyone seems to be getting ready for the long 4th of July weekend. But it's really business as usual for both sides. But the story was very different in Dickinson County where a tree across State Route 63 blocked traffic including a coal convoy and a company security car. 120, the security vehicle said that a large group of pickets were surrounding the vehicle. At 131 called and said that the pick Pickets were trying to turn the vehicle over. Two minutes later, called on the radio and said they had broken the glass and the passenger in the vehicle had a cut on his head and they had several flat tires. But one minute later, they called and said that the state police had arrived on the scene. And Many out-of-state miners remain off the job and picketing in southwest Virginia with no intention of obeying a federal court order to return to work. Hey, it's easy for a judge to order you back when he's sitting in an office. He don't know what we're trying to do here apparently we need uh, we need this unity here the out-of-state strikers say that Pittston is not only working against the UMW but against their companies as well I mean they're not only against the union person they're against the companies the honorable companies in the in the coal industry both sides are still at an impasse and there have been no recent negotiation John Mongol News Center 5 came after Governor Gaston Caperton denounced yesterday's incident on the Kanawha County, Boone County border in which two trucks were shot up. It was the first gunfire reported in the coal walkout. State police have made no arrests in that incident, but they admit they've stepped up patrols in the coal field. Still, police say this week has been one of the most violent in the 12-week strike. But News Center 5's John Mongo reports, union members say there has been no violence. Both picketing United Mine Workers members and Pittston workers on the job apparently decided to start the holiday weekend early. Traffic on both sides of the labor dispute had fallen off noticeably today, but it's been a long, hot week. We've had uh, some trees cut across the road. Uh, we've had a large incident of uh, jack rocks and uh, other metal devices uh, puncturing tires. We've had uh, uh, garage burn down. We've had uh, people's vehicles being shot into. The question remains, who is responsible? Given the lay of the land and the distances involved, state police often don't find suspects. But UMW members are adamant that it's not them. Well, it's been proven that some of the truckers and van security's been throwing the jack rocks. I, I understand a beaver cut a tree down. So other than that, uh, there's not been any violence, not on the picking line. State troopers say most of the violence that has occurred has been aimed at the company. Most of the reports that we get appear to be uh, uh, coal trucks being uh, damaged in some way, uh, uh, private residences and uh, private vehicles belonging to uh, coal company employees. Even when an arrest is made, state police say they are unsure who is who in the dispute. So we, do, we do not try to identify them as uh, taking any sides on any issue. But company officials are more definite when it comes to assigning the blame, despite denials by union members. It's occurred at every strike. Uh, it occurred at A.T. Massey. It occurred at New Beckley Coal with us from the beginning. They're out to bust the union. They're going to use anybody they can. They're using the judge. They're using the state police. They're using the van security. They're in, intimidating us. They'll follow us home. And they're doing anything to create any kind of problem that they can. Striking Pittston employees say they're getting the upper hand on the dispute with strong support from UMW members across the country. With the strike entering its 12th week, there appears to be no end in sight. Neither side has been willing to sit down at the bargaining table for several weeks. At Moss Number 3 in Russell County, Virginia, John Mongol, News Center 5. This is normally a slow time of the year, but because of the strike, business is even slower than expected. Well, incoming coal this week is down less than 50 percent. We don't know what next week will be. Generally, we don't get that information on what's going to be shipped until Friday or Saturday. 
We have not laid off any employees. We're continuing to load ships. We will continue as long as we have coal. The coal at Dominion won't last very long if many ships come in. Even the biggest mound at the terminal won't fill a British ship currently docked. The strike could not have come at a worse time, just when the U.S. coal industry was rebounding from a major slump just three years ago. Do not get the idea that we are not stable in producing coal and shipping coal. So there may be some negative impact there, but maybe it'll be short-lived. Railroads have also been affected. The CSX... Happy birthday, America. 213 years of independence. Good evening. This group are celebrating this 4th of July at a rally in St. Paul, Virginia. Tens of thousands of miners from other states are still off the job. They are demonstrating solidarity for the strike against Pittston. And that strike is now affecting power companies and coal shippers. We have two reports on the strike tonight. One from John Mongol, the other from Terry Renozzi. We begin with John. Union songs, food, and fellowship were the staples for several thousand United Mine workers, their families, and supporters. But the three-month-old strike with the Pittston Coal Group was never far from anyone's mind. They're just trying to get out from under obligations they've got to, to the people that's worked to put them where they're at. And the miners got support from Cesar Chavez, the man who organized California migrant farm workers. You know, on the West Coast, it's talked about and commented about a lot more than most strikes, than any strike. Chavez urged nonviolence and continued civil disobedience, but he said some sort of action was a must. The greatest proponent of nonviolence, Mr. Gandhi, once said that it's better to commit violence and not to do anything. For we don't support violence, we support people who do something. The rhetoric and concern over the strike was always present, but it was clear those attending the rally were also having fun. The rain and the mud have typified this rally almost as much as the music and the camouflage. But the people here haven't had their spirits dampened. Well, this just builds their morale up. You know, it's been almost three months, or just right at three months, and, uh, you know, they need a morale booster at times and just shows that they're not alone. But it's more of a family reunion than it is anything else, as well as the 4th of July that is celebrating our nation's uh, anniversary and all this. It's been a great time for people just getting together. People did, don't even know each other. The good news came from Cecil Roberts, the union's number two man, who says the National Labor Relations Board has ruled in the union's favor on several issues. Roberts says the board agrees with the union that the strike is over unfair labor practices. It's also notified us that he sent a uh, proposed settlement order to Pittston uh, for their consideration that will include a million dollars in back pay for the workers here. So there is some uh, great news to, to tell these people. While this news may boost union morale, few people on either side of the strike are hopeful of a quick settlement. In St. Paul, Virginia, John Mongol, News Center 5. Coal production has declined as miners in Appalachia and the Midwest continue to work slow down in support of union members striking the Pittston Coal Group. The power plants in eight states have enough coal supplies at this time, but inventories could become scarce if the work stoppage continues. American Electric Power System says it has a 70-day supply of coal, and it is receiving less coal shipments from non-union mines. Foreign shippers say coal exports through Hampton Roads, Virginia, may be reduced in half this month. The fate of exports for the full year may become clear next week, depending on whether striking union members return to work along with vacationing miners. At least six coal ships have canceled calls at Hampton Roads. One observer says overseas buyers will forgive a short-term labor tantrum, but a long-term dispute is a different story. Shippers aren't making any new commitments, and for companies like United, Consol, Island Creek, and Peabody, it could mean tougher times ahead. Terry Renutzi, New Center 5. Betty Penny, thanks for being with us this evening. Well, Virginia State Police are investigating an early morning dynamite explosion that occurred at a piston supply parts warehouse. A batch of dynamite sticks went off around 2.30 this morning at the number six warehouse in McClure, Virginia. The explosion blew out windows in the warehouse where it was reported Pittston security workers were staying. No injuries were reported. 20 feet away from the explosion, a Pittston employee found a second bundle of 25 to 30 sticks of dynamite which failed to detonate. Pittston Coal Group President Mike Odom responded when asked if he thought the striking miners were responsible by saying, there's no question in my mind. Today marks the third month of the UMWA strike against Pittston. Are beginning to examine the possible effects of a lengthy strike. 
Among those contemplating the economic future include merchants and utilities. While the labor strife in southwest Virginia continues, merchants in towns like Lebanon, which is the home of Pittston, are now beginning to wonder about the effects of a long, drawn-out strike. Many of these striking miners are part-time farmers who purchase supplies from co-ops like this one. There have been no reports of sluggish sales so far, but many in town are concerned about the effects six months from now. Our main concern right now is long-range effects on our business. Uh, we're looking going into the winter with home heating fuel, and uh, you're going to see a lot of the miners be mighty tough on them to uh, pay their bills this winter. Coal plants like this one in Carbo, Virginia, which is operated by American Electric Power, could also feel the effects. These plants produce hundreds of thousands of kilowatt power each day. But some estimates indicate strike activities have cut the amount of coal from the Moss No. 3 prep plant by a third. Kingsport Power depends on coal from the strike-related areas. Supplies are adequate now, but officials are watching closely. If that continues uh, uh, throughout the summer, uh, we obviously uh, could get into a, a potential problem. But And while the coal supply situation is under control, many electric utilities are also concerned about a long strike and a hot summer. You could buy coal from uh, other suppliers. Uh, you could even buy power from other utilities. But uh, it would have to continue for a long period of time before we got into those kinds of situations. Yesterday, striking miners held a pep rally in St. Paul, Virginia, where United Farm Workers Union President Cesar Chavez pledged his support. The United Mine Workers are also receiving fin financial assistance from other unions as the strike continues. There's a warehouse owned by the strike-plague Pittston Coal Group. No one was injured, but discovery of a second bigger bundle of dynamite forced the evacuation of the area in Dickinson County and closed State Route 63 for hours. News Center 5's Lisa Mitchell has more. It took nine hours after the explosion for police to remove a large bundle of dynamite from the warehouse that didn't explode into a special transport unit that cleared the way for reopening the highway allowing Pittston to reoccupy the warehouse as headquarters for security and housing workers and about a dozen evacuated families to return home. As many as 20 people in the warehouse were in danger when sticks of dynamite exploded in a ditch, shattering windows in the warehouse and in an occupied home across the street, including a window above the bed of a 13-year-old girl. It shattered the windows all around her, and if it wasn't for the cover that she was underneath, it had cut her all to pieces. As bomb agents search for clues, residents say the explosion shook homes as much as a mile away. The bundle that didn't explode forced the evacuation. There were 30 sticks, two feet long, and about the size of an igloo water cooler, and tied in a batch. The small package of dynamite that detonated did more damage to the Bowen residents across the street than the Pittston warehouse. But officials say if the large bundle had exploded, it would have leveled the warehouse. Pittston Coal Group President Mike Odom says he thinks the explosion was an act of intimidation by the United Mine Workers Union, but it didn't work. It makes me even more firm in my resolve that I'm not going to uh, yield terrorists. I'm going to focus my efforts on trying to find out who's doing it and catch somebody. And at that point, I'll take it right to the top of the International in Washington. We're not doing this. It's agents and representatives of the United Mine Workers. I'm convinced of that. This is their tradition. They always disavow any knowledge until they're caught. Pittston is housing some strike replacement workers on site to try to protect them from violence in the strike. In McClure, Virginia, Lisa Mitchell, New Center. And long, slow-moving convoys has proved an expensive pastime for the United Mine Workers a federal judge in Abington today levied more heavy fines against the union and its leadership. News Center 5's John Mongol reports the fines come for the violation of a restraining order in the three-month-old strike with Pittston Coal. The union calls them tourists. Company officials call them a rolling blockade. But to Judge Glenn Williams, they're striking miners actively disobeying his temporary restraining order. Fines from Williams now total $880,000. On June 23rd, Williams fined the union 200000 with fines of 20000 each against union leaders John Cox and Cecil Roberts. 
for the convoys on the 23rd and five days last week, the judge levied fines of 100,000 per day against the union and 10,000 per day each against Cox and Roberts. Further violations will be punished with $500,000 per day fines against the union and $50,000 per day fines against each Roberts, the union's vice president, and Cox, an international representative. A cash or property bond equal to the fines were required by the judge while the union makes its appeals. If the bond is not made, the judge has ordered the U.S. attorney to begin attaching the property of Roberts, Cox, and the union. Williams said all attempts at keeping the roads unobstructed for company trucks was all just sort of whistling Dixie. District 28 President Jackie Stump called the fines excessive. Pickets left the entrances of Pittston operations and began the convoys after a spate of state and federal court rulings limited that protest. The union will be back in Williams Court next week for the judge to determine if his order is now being obeyed. In Abingdon, Virginia, John Mongol, News Center, Fox. Voucher says he is trying to bring the United Mine Workers and Pittston Coal officials together. Voucher says all elected officials in southwest Virginia should be making an effort to end the three-month strike. The Democrat has been criticized by some businessmen for appearing on the picket lines in union camouflage. And I'm taking every step that I can to try to bring these parties together. As a matter of fact, uh, we are taking steps in Washington today uh, to conduct discussions between the president of the mine workers on the one hand and the chief executive officer of the Pittston Company on the other. And I'm very hopeful that those discussions will lead to a settlement of this strike. If the strike is prolonged, the economy in the most fragile part of, of Virginia today will only be worsened, and the economic strength that we have in the coal-producing counties will be sapped. Neither side would comment on Boucher's efforts this afternoon. Black is the color for prisoners of China's gulag. Strict